Job chapter 3, through the Bible. Part 3. Job's first discourse. After this opened Job his mouth, and cursed his day. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which it was said, There is a man-child conceived. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. Job 3, verses 1 to 5. This is a very beautiful speech, very flowery, but when you add it all up, boil it down, and strain it, he is simply saying, I wish I hadn't been born. How many times have you said that? I'm of the opinion that many of us have said it, especially when we were young and something disappointed us. This is what Job is saying, only he is saying it in poetic language. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Lo, let that night be solitary. Let no joyful voice come therein. Let them curse it that curse the day, who are ready to raise up their morning. Let the stars of the twilight thereof be dark. Let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day. Because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from mine eyes. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Or why the breasts that I should suck? Job 3, verses 6 to 12. Job is saying loud and clear, I wish I had never been born. It is interesting, my friend, that this attitude never solves any problems of this life. You may wish you had never been born, but you can't undo the fact that you have been born. You may wish that you could die, but you will not die by wishing. It is all a waste of time. It may help a person let off some steam. That seems to be what it does for Job now. For now should I have lain still and been quiet, I should have slept. Then had I been at rest, with kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves. Job 3 verses 13 and 14. They built great monuments or great pyramids for themselves. Or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver. Or as in hidden untimely birth I had not been, as infants which never saw light. Job 3, verses 15 and 16. He wishes he had been stillborn. Job complains that this oblivion has been denied him. He describes death as the great equalizer. All sleep equally. There are two things Job is saying in this chapter. He wishes that he had never been born. However, having been born, he wishes that he had died at birth. These are his two wishes in this chapter, and he finds no relief from his misery. There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. The small and great are there, and the servant is free from his master. Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery, and life unto the bitter in soul, which long for death, but it cometh not, and dig for it more than for hid treasures, which rejoice exceedingly, and are glad, when they can find the grave? Why is light given to a man whose way is hid, and whom God hath hedged in? For my sighing cometh before I eat, and my roarings are poured out like the waters. Job 3, verses 17 to 24. He pictures death as being preferred to life. He says that life is such a burden. He doesn't want to live. He would rather die. Job says he would welcome death like a miner who is digging for gold and gives a shout of joy when he finds it. He is in a desperate, desolate condition. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. 
I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Job 3, verses 25 and 26. Job had been dwelling in peace and prosperity in the land of Uz, and things had been going so well with him. He was living in the lap of luxury. Everyone was saying, look at Job. He certainly has a wonderful life, Job says. At that very moment, I was living in fear. And the thing that I dreaded has come upon me. His tranquility, even in his days of prosperity, was disturbed by the uncertainty of life. I think that is a fear of a great many people today. They fear that something terrible is going to happen to them. Our problem is that we grab for our security blanket instead of grabbing for the Savior. We ought to be using our Bible for our blanket instead of turning to other things. We need to rest upon the Word of God. One would almost get the impression that Job has lost his faith. He actually has not. This is the bitter complaint of a man who is tasting the very dregs in the bottom of the cup of life. Trouble has come upon him, and he does not understand at all why it should have come. It is a monologue of complaint as his friends sit around him. The language is tremendous, but Job does not have the answer. It is black pessimism.